HIV is not a core morbidity most think about when COVID-19 deaths are reported. Usually we think of diabetes, hypertension, heart disease and asthma, but rarely do we think of the human immunodeficiency virus. According to the World Health Organization, people living with HIV are at an increased risk of getting severely sick with COVID and possibly dying if they are immunocompromised. Yet, meet a Barbadian woman living with HIV who contracted COVID-19 and lives to tell her tale, as well as her daily struggles to protect herself from reinfection. We are not using her real name, her image will be hidden, and her voice has been altered to protect her identity. This is her COVID story. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I am 43 years old. I'm asthmatic. I had heart surgery. I had a stroke. Yes, I had a surgery already. And also, I'm living with HIV. This is seven years now I live with HIV. And then I, I had a boyfriend for 20 years of my life. So when I took off the condos now, Couple months after, when I hear he passed on, I went and get my blood do, and that's how I contact HIV. I never knew he had HIV, he never tell me. So just to clarify, when he died, you weren't together? No, please, uh -uh, no, please. So how do you manage that particular condition on a day-to-day -day basis? Every morning, when I arrive, I still learn, I thank you and my life is in your hands, and I gotta take these medications to help me to live. I've got to take aspirins every morning. They buy 320 milligrams. I've got to take HIV medication, a trickler at night, which they give me nightmares. And I've also an asthmatic. I've got to take loratadine. I've got to take and histone to help me to live my daily life. What about your day-to-day -day nutrition? How do you manage that given the underlying issues you have? Well, I eat, I, I eat my fruits and my vegetables, but I don't eat nothing free. It's got to use be our boy. All right, so let's jump into the meat of the matter, if I can describe it as that. When you first heard about this illness called COVID-19 back in 2020 when it came to Barbados, obviously it was around a little before, what were your initial thoughts about it? I didn't tell you no. My doctor, Dr. Wayne Clark, did not want me to be at work. And then, then he told a call back Dr. Wayne Clark. And he said, Dr. Wayne Clark, I go to the gymnasium. I'm going to get tests and make sure that I don't have COVID. And I going to take the vaccine. I said, Dr. Wayne Clark, I could get the vaccine with my HIV and my medical conditions. He told me yes. And when the frontline nurses was going, I didn't have no appointment. I went to Six Rose Clinic and I get my first vaccine. And then I went back and I get my second vaccine. So you made a decision in February 2021 to get vaccinated. Yes, please. Back then it was AstraZeneca that was being offered. Yes, please. Okay. Why would you want to be vaccinated? Because I want to live my life. I turn in a fear for all the times that I went through. I went through so much in my medical life. Back then I had heart surgery. Back then I had strokes. Back then I had a bad asthma, I had a bad asthma attack which she was in hospital on Ward B8 and they spent three months in hospital. And I said, I said, you see me? If the Lord could bring me from 1995 to 2000 and 2001, he could bring me more. So you received both doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. How did you feel after taking them? The, when I took the, the first vaccine, well, I had a low fever, but it went down and it feel like, don't let me get sick with it. And, I, and my heart was in fear. So I turned in and said, well, I had a little chills and thing, and it went there. And when you had the second dose, what happened? The second dose, it haven't done me anything. 
So this is months since you've been vaccinated, but late August, September, you tested positive for COVID-19. Yes, please. Tell me about that. I have a son. He is 23 years old. Don't listen to me. Um, he blocks smoking, he's reading everything, room friends. And how do I know the barbers defect force? He was on the phone and he started getting out of certain way, telling people when I can't come for me and get on very um, rude to the people. So he took away the phone and he asked who me, me, I asked who speaking on the phone. So they tell me them from the barbers defect force they come in for my son because that he, he got to go and get tests. So I told them, okay, they could come. So when they came for him now, the next day he called me and told me he positive. And the COVID-19 unit people called me and told me that I have to go to the gymnasium to get tests because he tests positive. When I went and I found out that I had COVID, it put me, I was in shock. I was such in a shock. I turned and I said, oh Lord, I went through so much, God. This is my time, I don't want to die. But if it's my time, Lord, I pray and I say, Lord, forgive me. And I, I beg the Lord, I say, Lord, don't let me be sick. And I keep on praying and I keep on praying. No time I got to go up on the ventilators. But thank God that I didn't have to go up on the ventilators. Thank you, God. So given your underlying conditions, could you describe the severity of the illness you experienced when you were COVID-19 positive? I had a bad cold, my nose was running, and also my asthma was, I was wheezing as well. My lungs was hurting me. I, sometimes I could breathe, and sometimes I could not, because I tell you all, when, when you got COVID, COVID is filled with your lungs. And when that COVID lock off your lungs, that's the end of you. And I pray every day I use the inhalers. Lord, let me breathe. I don't want to gain the other isolation because if I go, I will go away a face mask on yeah, on oxygen. Every morning, Dr. Ford and his team, they still got to give me COVID tests every morning. Every morning, they look like the, the straws in my nose. Three mornings. And then I had to go downstairs at the three mornings to make sure I'm okay. And they gave me, because they had a, a bar cold too as well, they gave me cinema ammonia. They gave me my asthma inhalers. I wish I had to use my asthma inhalers every two hours and extend it more. I had to use the summer car and the ventilator. And they gave me vitamins. I had to use B12. I had to use SS tonic because my immune system went down. It was weak. So they, they built me up because it, it was making me weak. You were in isolation at Harrison Point. Now, primary isolation is for those people who are completely critical, who are really battling for their life. But that didn't appear to be the case with you. Where exactly in those isolation categories you stayed? I stayed in secondary isolation, please. Okay, and where was your son? My son was in second isolation well as well. Was he experiencing symptoms? Yes, please. He had a bad cold and also he's an asthmatic too. And he, he, he walking boat and he refusing not to take the vaccine. I beg him to take the vaccine. He don't want to take the vaccine. Do you think that the fact that you took the vaccine in February helped you during your stay at Harrison Point when you were COVID-19 positive? Yes. The vaccine is what saved me today. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if I, if I didn't get the vaccine, I will not be here today to talk with y'all. I'd be dead. Why you say so? Because the vaccine, with the vaccine, it, it, it made me from getting that sick because with my lungs and things was kicking in and everything, I didn't get that really that sick, sick. But thank God I'm here. Why do you think your son does not want to be vaccinated. My, my two sons and my daughter, but my daughter take the vaccine, but the two sons they have, they don't believe in vaccine, they believe in marijuana. They don't believe that a vaccine exists because it may in like, it, it making a year, and they believe if it ain't making a year, they would have taken it. 
But them, them say that they miss you about this vaccine. I how one this vaccine is going to make your dog check face, but people dying with it all the back there. I told them these words, go and get the vaccine because after COVID, in your second, COVID could give you blood clots. I want y'all to know that. COVID don't play. COVID is the thing that when you got it, it's lock off your lungs and it's give, it's give blood clots. So much things that COVID is do. And I advise the young people who want to take the vaccine, don't like me, take the vaccine. The vaccine is to save your life. So what are some of the things you do now differently to protect yourself having gone through that experience at her at some point? Well, I try to protect myself the best way ever because I may not survive. If I catch that COVID, I may not survive it because of my underlying issues, my HIV, my asthma, because COVID is living alone, so I got to be very careful. And I keep on advising my son, he's still not wearing a mask. He's still walking the street, he's doing that he like. So I am begging you all today, come in my neighborhood, I want help, I want these young people to know that COVID is real, COVID don't play. And let me tell you, ain't playing, it's not playing. People think that it is just a little cool, some people don't think it's real. Which side of the spectrum he lays on? Well, to me, you think it's not real, but I know it's real. So even after he went through COVID-19 at some point and he was sick and wheezing and what's not, he still does not think it is. No, please, still not wearing your mask, still on the street, still smoking, doing nice he like. How do you protect yourself in the household? I just go wear a mask inside and outside. Every time I go in, I sanitize my hand at the door. I take off my mask, wash my hands, everything, and put on a new mask. If I go in the kitchen, I have on a mask. Whatever I do in the house, I have to wear a mask. When he go outside, I take off my mask and get released. But when he in there, I keep on my mask. That's how I have to protect myself from being that sick again. It's unbelievable that you live in your house and you have to go through something like that. It's almost as if you are pretty much every day fighting to stay alive yes. if you have to take these steps. I am so afraid, hon. I ain't telling life. I am so afraid that I know I am going to catch back COVID again. If I repeat COVID, I'm going to die because that was the first thing, but this thing, the second time, I'm not going to survive it. Is that just your belief? Based on my conditions, HIV, my heart surgery, my asthma, and I know that COVID is lock off your lungs. This, this is my belief. So if it's my time, but it's my time. Attempts to reach out to Jenny's son for a comment were unsuccessful. Based on Jenny's beliefs, I decided to get a medical perspective on the vulnerabilities of living with HIV and COVID-19. I spoke with Dr. Tiffany Jordan, who works with the Lady Mead Reference Unit, which specializes in HIV management and prevention services. Hi, Dr. Jordan. Hi, Shanko. How are why is the risk of getting severely sick with COVID-19 increased for persons living with HIV? The risk of getting severely ill is high in some patients living with HIV, um, but not all. Many persons living with HIV are living longer because of treatment. Many patients are reaching age 50 and over, and the chronic diseases currently uh, being experienced in Barbados affect our patients as well. So. Persons living with HIV can be at higher risk for getting COVID-19 infection if they are um, the profile of a patient who has other comorbid conditions such as asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, diabetes and high blood pressure and other similar um, non-communicable diseases. Patients may also be at risk if they are immunocompromised, which means that their immune systems have been weakened by the HIV infection and they may not have a normal or efficient enough response against the COVID-19 infection. Um, so these types of patients with HIV would be at higher risk of severe illness, of hospitalization, and of death. 
Uh, other patients who take medication consistently uh, and who do not have comorbid conditions would be at much lower risk, similar to the general population. So what steps should a person who is living with HIV take to protect themselves from COVID-19? Well, they should follow the, um, the general protocols that have been stipulated by the government and the Ministry of Health. Uh, they should take their medications consistently because that helps to ensure that they will have um, the best possible immune system to fight uh, any infection, including COVID-19. And they should also get vaccinated. Um, if they have any concerns about the vaccines, um, any concerns about any um, comorbid conditions that they have um, or allergic reactions that they may have, they can speak to their, um, their doctors about those specific things. Is there a different treatment regime for persons living with HIV who contract COVID-19? No, the treatment regime is going to be the same. Uh, it's just important that they continue the antiretroviral treatment for HIV uh, during the time that they're being treated for COVID-19. One of the most important things that we do is to ensure that patients still have access to the antiretroviral therapy because it would be very important um, should they become infected. So we would ensure that patients are able to get the medications even though they're in isolation facilities, we would have them delivered there. So what advice do you have for family members, relatives, or persons who live in the same household as a person with HIV in terms of keeping the household and COVID free and particularly protecting that, that vulnerable individual? Well, my advice would, um, would be that they should follow the protocols implemented by the Ministry of Health. Uh, that members of the household get vaccinated because it does reduce the risk of transmission of COVID-19. Um, persons can regularly sanitize frequently touched areas within the home, such as light fixtures, do doorknobs, counters, etc. And they can, if they're aware of their relative's HIV status, they can encourage them to take their medication consistently. In your experience, has the stigma and discrimination been similar between HIV and COVID-19 for you? It has at some point, they treat me very well. Yes, we use the same bathroom that was respectable to me. Uh, I had no problems there. The only problems I have is at work. When you're at work and people discriminate against me, uh, you know, and the uh, other, other humans as well too, but you know, it is what it is. I lose a lot of my friends due to the fact they have HIV. What is the fear of your co-workers? Well, the fear of my co-workers, I want them to know I still love them. But then, but I got HIV. Then, then don't like to work with me. I can't use the same bathroom as them. I have a bathroom on my own. Yes, the boss gave me a bathroom for myself. Because they don't eat, like, and even, he will tell you even, and he bought a fridge and a microwave and other things that put in to make me happy. But on the other side, I am happy. I want to be home and rest myself. I had my times of rejections and I can't bear it no more. Can you explain to people how HIV is passed from human to human? Because it seems a little strange to me that you need to have your own bathroom, your own microwave. And I mean, this, this illness has been around for so long, I would think that most persons would understand how HIV is passed. Well, you can't catch HIV by using the same fertilities as everybody, but you can catch COVID by in front of people, by touching and everything. If somebody sneezes, you can catch it. To me, all two is the same, but COVID is more deadly than HIV. You can live long with HIV, but you cannot live with COVID. Once more, we sought Dr. Jordan's input, this time on how HIV is transmitted. Okay, in our region of the world, HIV is considered to be a sexually transmitted infection. In 80% of cases, it's sexually acquired. However, you can also have transmission via mother to child. So when a pregnant mother uh, with living with HIV who is not on treatment, um, either is carrying her baby or delivers her baby, transmission can occur through that route and also via breastfeeding. But you can also have transmission through the use of injection drug needles, such as uh, with heroin addicts. That's not very common in our setting, however. 
and you can also have transmission through blood transfusions but again that's very very rare uh, in our setting because the blood um, that is blood products are tested in Barbados so it's something that we don't see here it's not transmitted via, I would say, routine, casual contact with persons living with HIV. There have been misconceptions about it being transmitted by using the same eating utensils, using the same bathroom, and those types of casual things, but that is not the way that HIV is transmitted. Dr. Jordan, I want to thank you for taking the time to explain to us why persons living with HIV should take the extra steps to protect themselves from COVID-19. Okay. Thank you, it was a pleasure. So in both cases, with HIV and with COVID-19, they were brought home to you. How do you feel about that? I feel disappointed about it because I lose, I telling you, you all know, I lose all of my friends. I thought I had friends and my children. Only one body will really do anything for the mom is the daughter but not the two sons, not them. Them do a listen. And really and truly, I want somewhere to go from them because on me, this, this COVID, I hear me in a mask, and I'm going to pick it back up again. I don't think I want to be around them no more. So what would you like? What type of help or assistance do you believe you need? I believe that I want a little way, a little room to go, a little way to live. I want to live right because Ain't, ain't easy dealing with it. Ain't easy dealing with people from drugs. Ain't easy them comfort in your brain and then you're gonna be stressing every day with them pawn the mask. You know, bring it back home for me and you know what? The, the kind of attitudes they get in, any attitudes they want right now. What advice do you have for others? I telling y'all, the people out there not telling y'all that they're living with HIV. And they telling y'all young girls out there keep on y'all condoms. Do a take them off, and if you find a right partner, go and get tests and live the right life here. Young girls, be safe and be careful. I want these young people to know that this block life is not for them. Forget the people on the blocks. The people on the blocks are sending all the wrong message. Wear your mask, sanitize, protect your families. Please, a begging one of you make the drug men on the blocks. Grandmothers, mothers, tell your children wear masks. It will save your lives. I want to see this COVID go away. I want to see young people got work. I want to see, you know, I want to see nice things going on before I leave this earth. Because in this life, we only got one life and we be passed through it. We ain't know where we're going. I want to thank you for sharing your intimate moments that you experience with both HIV and COVID-19 with us. That was definitely a very brave thing for you to do. And I really hope that your family will take the necessary steps to protect themselves and to protect you. Thank you very much. And you stay safe and you be careful. Thank you. I will certainly try. <laughs>